brief presentation day to this video on the topic energy sector yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Organized by the Institution in the Council in association with Electrical Engineering Department and the Eco Club of Greater Kolkata College of Engineering and Management. I am an assistant professor of Computer Science and Engineering Department. I am privileged to be the host of this session. So today we have Honorable Speaker of this Rishmi Gopi. Here is a great profile of Tony Gopi. He has over 12 years of experiences in project management, planning, and business development in infrastructure capital projects, domestic as well as international projects funded by ESIM Bank of India, Asian Development Bank, African Development Bank, World Bank, etc. In power sector, transmission, distribution, and substation, AIS and GIS projects. As a project management consultant, she has struggles accomplish a job with the estimated cost, time, and with less hassle through a strategic process. As a career counselor and mentor, she support aspirants in the self assessment, spot analysis, etc. She was a guest speaker as an alumnus of Vedna and project management and its importance organized by IMT Gaziaba. She conducted webinar as guest faculty in Kushkar Government Engineering College. Invited by Sunday Services and Solutions to conduct a webinar on power industry, past, present, and future. Nominated for the Hard Rising Award 2021 Modern Race Startups category organized by Jobs for Nominated for the Hard Rising Award 2020 in Women in Day category organized by Jobs for Hard Rising Award. Member of the Women's Forum, Ontario Council, and Major K, and School Corner Forum. Gold block budget, uh, gold block bags winner and mom's peso for writing exceptional content. She is a content writer and connectify us. Now the session is over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Madhumita, for a beautiful introduction. And I'm really honored to be here. And uh, hello, I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, Madhumita, thank you for this beautiful introduction. And hello, everyone. And this is good afternoon from the heart of our uh, nation, capital, Delhi. And it's too cold here, and I'm literally shivering. But uh, okay. hello, hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, hello, everyone, for your time. And let me share the screen with you first. Just a minute. Please bear with me. And uh, yes, the today's topic is energy sector, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. First of all, let's celebrate the day that is the 14th December, National Energy Conservation Day. And uh, uh, this day, this uh, Energy Conservation Day Act was implemented by the Energy Efficiency Bureau in 2001. It is because to our people, about the global warming, about the climate change, and uh, uh, encourage people to save energy and uh, uh, to encourage people to con consume energy less just because of this global changing or all this. And you know, the people, especially who are in Delhi NCR, they can literally uh, experience the global changes because half of the year, uh, especially during this year, uh, post Diwali, so we experience uh, very another uh, huge air pollution, and these are the everything that are changing our climate, the global. But particular for so there are so many uh, steps we are taking nowadays to 
limit the global energy to control the uh, global uh, warming. And one of this is the uh, energy conservation. And this day that we are uh, celebrating the energy, National Energy Con uh, Conservation Day. So as you all are engineer and future engineer here, so it is my humble request to you all, it take a vote, take an vote that we will, uh, you will uh, do the necessary to uh, uh, our people for uh, towards the global warming, towards the climate change and towards the saving energy resources. And uh, uh, we, you know, there are two type of energy resources because there is an in entire power sector that is divided uh, by the resources of the energy that is the generation. Because there is a three part, right? There is a generation, then this is a transmission and then distribution. So today, the main topic is based on the generation because the uh, transmission and distribution is the part, the uh, next sequences. The main is the main thing is the resources, and the resources that depends upon the uh, world economy, that the uh, country's economy, the uh, resources, status of climate change, and everything. So, being an not only being an engineer, just being a responsible citizen, it's our uh, uh, responsibility to know to be aware of these changes and uh, uh, then we only we can take the steps as you are the future citizens of our, our nation and our future. So definitely you should know all these things. And uh, <clears throat> this is the normal structure in Indian power system that is the generation and the transmission, then the distribution. Uh, let's come first uh, to the transmission and distribution, then we'll discuss about the generation because it's a, a huge uh, topic. Transmission is, you can say that how the power is the generation and the distribution, the transmission is how we carry the power to conductor and the other uh, materials. So this is the transmission part. And this is the distribution part, how we consume this power. It may be uh, uh, hydropower, it may be hydro power, it may be a thermal power, whatever the power, how we uh, transmit and then we distribute. Right. Now the power generation. Power generation, as I said, that it is the biggest concern nowadays. So uh, based on the resources, we can divide the generation in two parts. One is uh, uh, non-renewable and that's the renewable next is. So what are the renewable? Renewable is that we cannot replace that power generate those resources in coming millions of years, thousands and millions of years that are already stored in our nature. You know, nature is a giver. It gives us now our responsibility to give it back. Other, if our nature is not good, then we will we cannot be good. So it is our responsibility to save our nature. So nature has huge resources. It has oil, it has natural gases, it has a coal, nuclear energy. So this all are the source of non-renewable resources. That means we cannot renew it, we cannot reuse it because it uh, takes thousands or millions of years to restore these energies. So like oil, natural gas, these are, okay. And the renewable energy- Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse uh, me, ma'am. Yes? Uh, please, uh, please uh, do the slideshow. Uh, slide is, is not visible. No, the slide, uh, slides are visible. The slide is visible, but uh, I'm saying that slide show, that means, uh, there is a button that is facing the, uh, it is not in slideshow. Full screen, uh, actually, ma'am, full screen the slides. Okay. Ma'am, there is an option slideshow. Just click on the button. Just a minute. Let me check. Thank you. 
Uh, not getting the option. Ma'am, ma'am, in the in the light side, there is a maximum minimal limit. In there is a symbol that is a screen symbol. You can see in the right hand side, right right corner. In the right corner below, there is a right corner. Just a minute. Just a minute. Ma'am. Please click on slideshow. Slideshow button. Insert design. Ma'am, please press slideshow and then from current slide. Just a minute. Actually, there's no option is showing. I. Ma'am, okay, okay ma'am, no problem. Task task task. Okay, okay, we can see. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay. No problem. I don't know. It, no option is showing here. Just a minute, pause. Okay, ma'am, then it's fine. We can see the slide also. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry because it, no option is showing here. Ma'am, no, okay, problem. Ma no okay. problem. No problem. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, okay, can you see the slide? Is it visible? Yes, 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 ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yes, yes. Madam, you, you please try uh, pressing A. Ma'am, no problem. No problem. Slides are completely visible. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so, based on uh, the resources, it is non renewable and renewable. I have already discussed the renewable. Now, come to the non renewable. Non renewable are the resources. That we can uh, easily replace, I mean, regenerate, not replace, sorry, regenerate. That is the biomass hydropower. Hydropower is a conventional uh, resource, but it is renewable resource because we have a, a source of uh, ocean and the rivers. So, uh, I mean, uh, these are not consumable like coal or nuclear gases or natural gases. They are not type of consumable. And the ge geothermal. Geothermal is the heat that is under the earth, inside the earth. And uh, <clears throat> nowadays we are using this uh, heat also. And uh, like uh, um, you can, you know, the Bakreshar, and uh, there is are so many things, uh, so many ponds there are. And now there's a, a wind and solar. Wind power, you can uh, see mostly the western side of India. Okay. There's a, a Gujarat, Rajasthan. So there are uh, mostly you can find the wind power and the solar power. If, uh, it, uh, if you can uh, see, if you see the solar substations, so mostly you find this in the western uh, side of India. But if it is a consumable, I mean that, uh, that home uh, consumable or the distribution, uh, small distribution part. So now it is every part of the India because the uh, solar is easily available. So we can use it for households and everything. Like if you are heating water, okay. Winter, so we all uh, uh, take bath in lukewarm water normally. So this is the, uh, if you uh, use gas, so it will definitely uh, uh, very expensive. And if uh, you are heater, so so these also consume a lot of energy, lot of electricity. So if you use the uh, natural resource like solar 
and if you uh, heat the uh, water so you can easily get the lukewarm water and not only the lukewarm water you will get the vitamin d also so you can see that the our nature is a uh, giver and it has all the resources only what we need to do that we need to do the proper usage of our resources not the misuses so that is our responsibility and that is the today is uh, uh, the to spread the awareness to the people to use the natural resources and limit the uses of the electricity or the energy that increases the global warming <clears throat> and the power sector power sector is a huge industry huge sector and everything needs energy earlier days when the, the energy or power is not there uh, uh, there is a no huge uh, power generation station or then transmission distribution then we used to do all the things men used to do all the things manually and it required a lot of uh, not only human resource but the masculine power but when uh, uh, men they, <clears throat> uh, they uh, found the energy resources and uh, could utilize the energy resources then a drastic change you can find in our world in the civilization so it is a biggest invention not invention it is a biggest discovery because this resource was already there the steps was discovered so uh, without energy you cannot do anything you cannot run a mill you can ru cannot run a energy even you cannot run a mobile also right so energy is a very important thing but nowadays our all the <clears throat> electrical gadgets that are increasing and uh, uh, the ac heater cooler we are using so many things but we are we are thinking that we are either uh, uh, keeping our temperature inside the our room inside uh, our house is very pleasant but the result is the world is losing its natural uh, components so we have to be very careful <clears throat> now based on this uh, uh, resources our uh, <clears throat> let's come to the power generation because the resources are very important for everything for the economy for the uh, environment and everything and based on these you can find the where our and uh, coming uh, our future energy sector is going on and as you are a student you can find the where you can find the growth find the opportunity job opportunity so you need to know this <clears throat> there is a conventional and uh, <clears throat> Uh, non renewable energy these are the first we can say the thermal power generation and thermal power generation sources are coal and every year in india we need the coal you can see the this figure so <clears throat> this megawatt generation is there the sources and this is the figure with the gas generation of there and this is the figure of liquid fuels that is the diesel that is also uh, required so you can easily understand that how much we are consuming the coal and gas and this liquid fuels fuels and these are the limited resources because it need millions of years to restore all these resources but uh, as the demand of the electricity is increases so the demand of these resources are increasing day by day so if we do not think the <clears throat> alternate resources one day will come that the whole world will be in dark <clears throat> and uh, uh, there are some top points that is you can see that there are total power generation in thermal power plants as of 31st january 2001 across india it was 71 to 75% of total power generation of india so can you imagine uh, 
uh, till date we are depending upon the this coal gas and the liquid diesel and there are far away to go the miles to go to change the world uh, uh, not only world uh, uh, the global warming and everything so we have to miles to go and the advantage definitely there is an advantage the advantage is that the efficiency of the energy source is very high because if coal it produces heat very much because uh, if uh, uh, the small amount uh, amount of coal can produce a lot amount of heat and in the thermal generation we uh, we need the heat to generate the energy so that is is a biggest uh, advantage and another thing is it is you know, this energy source is well known because we are using since uh, years so all the our plants are already there and the system is all uh, regulating so its source is well known so it will take time uh, to replace the uh, replace the resource but definitely we have to replace replace the source and <clears throat> the production expenses are low. a thermal power if we uh, compare the thermal and hydrogen power then definitely the <clears throat> cost of the production expenses are uh, lower than uh, it lower than the hydel power so there is another uh, another reason but you know resources are limited and it uh, it has an impact negative impact towards our global warming and this and this advantage uh, it is all known to us it is not environmental friendly and when used on a longer run it can deplete soon the main reason is that it is not environment friendly so definitely we have to and the resources are so limited so limited and nowadays you know there is a so much problem is going on uh, <clears throat> on this uh, coal resources there is a so many regulatory you know all these things so definitely it's a biggest problem uh, going to be a biggest problem in future and um, now it is <clears throat> there is some information i have shared with you you know this is a, a present of thermal power plant in india and uh, nowadays <clears throat> new technology has been introduced the one is the uh, first uh, uh, was introduced is super critical coal plants and uh, it is uh, it uh, different from the traditional coal power plants because the water running through it works as a super critical fluid meaning it's neither a liquid nor a gas so it emits less energy and uh, uh, the consumption of coal is 33% lesser so definitely it is a one step and nowadays another uh, uh, technology has been introduced that is a ultra super critical and uh, <clears throat> introduced in india 2019 ntpc they uh, introduced this ultra super critical and nowadays we are uh, trying to consume this uh, technology because uh, you no know, super critical that is uh, in super critical there is a 3% less consumption consumption of coal and the ultra super critical we are trying to consume less coal so it is uh, comparatively the conventional uh, thermal power plant it is a different from the convention uh, uh, conventional thermal power plant yeah. <clears throat> and uh, i have uh, shared some information with you so definitely i think you will find uh, this uh, useful that is the central electricity authority has estimated that the capacity utilization of coal based thermal power plants will fall to us fall to as low as 40% by 2022 as additional non thermal electricity generation capacities come on stream and uh, again this is a covid uh, 19 it has an uh, impact to everywhere 
because the many industries that were uh, <clears throat> shut down that time. So the consumption of the electricity that time was uh, less and due to the, uh, that uh, the um, thermal plants, they were running at the half of their capacity that time. So these are the uh, feature. I mean, the present feature, I have shared some information with you. And as a uh, future uh, engineer or the responsible citizen of the country, you should know this. <clears throat> then is uh, uh, nuclear energy. Nuclear power is the fifth largest source of electricity in India after thermal, hydroelectric, and renewable sources of electricity. Though it is uh, uh, the Indian regulatory is also trying to uh, use it less because it so it also harms the environment because it produces huge uh, uh, heat and uh, it impacts uh, global uh, warming and the <clears throat> global health, everything. So we are, uh, I mean, the Indian regulatory, they are also trying to consume this less, but yes, definitely it has, a, uh, uh, it is an important resource. As you can see that, uh, see that is the fifth largest resource of electricity in India. And I have shared some information with you that the presently India has 22 nuclear uh, power uh, reactor uh, operating in seven states with an installed capacity of uh, 6,780 megawatt electric and future indigenous sorry, that PHWR reactors will be 700 megawatt electric gross is uh, 640 megawatt electric net the and the the uh, first four are being built at the. Uh, sorry. Hello. Abhi am kora chhe. Ek baar yaar ko dekho ya chal. Kora. Hello. 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 Uh, now, audible? Uh, ma'am, please continue, ma'am. Yeah. So you can note down this information. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> uh, Kakrapur 3 became the first of the four to achieve critically in July 2020. And the unit was connected to the grid in January 2001. So it is also uh, another information I've shared with you. <clears throat> now, uh, the hydro power generation plant. There is some information uh, you will find useful that the India has won 97 hydropower plants, and uh, the India's first hydropower plant was in Darjeeling. So, you all are from West Bengal, and you should uh, take pride uh, in this. The, our uh, first nuclear plant was in uh, West Bengal. And it was uh, 1887, definitely it was in British India. And uh, <clears throat> that capacity was 130 kilowatt. And the total capacity of hydroelectric power in India is 46,000 megawatt. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, everything has a pros and cons. The advantage of this uh, hydro power plant. Advantages is a clean and non-polluting uh, non resources of energy, definitely, because you know, uh, the coal it generate uh, uh, heat and uh, not only heat, it's the ashes, it uh, sprays with the air and uh, uh, creates the air pollution. As I said, that the North India, they <clears throat> experience a huge air pollution every year post the and still today so the Pollution day or another pollution day. And before the pandemic, the people are staying here. No, this time we were wearing masks before the pandemic. And, uh, and there is a no fuel required. No fuel required, definitely. Because if you, uh, 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 it's not, uh, not uh, no more coal required, no more fuel required. And it is also a renewable energy. Yeah, definitely, it's a renewable energy. 
and water is a source of energy and it does not consume water so it is a source of energy mind it, it is a source of energy but this system that doesn't consume water but there uh, <clears throat> everything has a pros and cons so the disadvantage is that the high expense thermal power plant establishment cost and running cost is lesser than the hydrogen power <clears throat> so the cost is uh, definitely one thing because when we plan the economy of our nation uh, nation for the country so there are uh, so many things as the education energy and everything and when we budget in our house also we also try uh, budgeting like a way to uh, invest less money and they get the maximum output so it is a, a, a highly expensive and if we uh, establish a new hydro power as it is a very expensive so uh, there is a, a very very cost uh, for the it is and the large areas of human <clears throat> habitation and agriculture fields are submerged uh, there is a, a large area is required and then nowadays uh, you can uh, you know so, in the narmada river and many other river there are activist activities are going on uh, keep people their life uh, is suffering their uh, suffering because there is a, a paddy fields the cultivation and there there is a <clears throat> dam is there so sometimes what uh, so if uh, a dam is there that the river natural flows that hampers and the people they are uh, bread and butter depends upon the river so their life is hampered so it is it is also a very uh, uh, difficult question nowadays in our prob uh, problem and <clears throat> so dam can be made in limited areas that is the uh, so the hydro power station already hydro power uh, station already running is okay but the new generate uh, new hydro power station it is difficult but the <clears throat> demand of electricity day by day is increasing so uh, we have to think other resources that we can generate the electricity and there is uh, an information i have shared with you that is india will have an installed hydro power generation capacity by <clears throat> capacity of 70000 megawatt by 2030 so it is our upcoming uh, future uh, future of the hydro power uh, station and uh, as an engineer and uh, you know, our future future engineer and the um, citizen of our country definitely you should know the, this uh, information Now come to the rene uh, renewable. Yes, definitely it was also renewable. Hydro power also renewable, but it was conventional, and the solar is non-conventional and renewable. Uh, <clears throat> I have I have shared another information with you as of thirty first of January two thousand twenty one. total the crude at 38794 megawatt including 34561 uh, megawatt of ground mounted capacity and 4233 megawatt of rooftop capacity the solar power plant nowadays the uh, in the in renewable uh, resources it is a uh, solar power is the most uh, discussed and more uh, used renewable resources <clears throat> and the beauty of the solar power is you can find everywhere every corner of the country you can find the solar power <clears throat> and uh, uh, at least if we uh, use for our households we use the solar power for our uh, households and uh, uh, <clears throat> street light electrification rural electrification where we can easily get the solar energy 
so we can save so many energy and it it has no cost i mean the installation cost is there the equipment installation cost is there but solar is free it is a natural resources no and it doesn't harm our environment if you get the solar resources uh <clears throat> resources so you can uh, electrify the street uh, electric uh, i mean uh, street light electrification and uh, the <clears throat> bridge electrification the one uh, bridge illumination and the households the many um, uh, many of the people they are using this kind of uh, is hydroelectric power plant Conventional renewable is hydropower is renewable energy or not? Yes, hydro or hydel is same thing. So hydropower is a renewable energy. Yes, Ami Amrita Dhar. Yes, Amrita. Hydro and hydel power is same. And. Uh, <clears throat> Yes, uh, solar and the solar energy definitely we should use the, I have shared some information with, with you that the India is entering a solar power revolution that will see it age out coal as the nation's top, top electricity uh, source according to the International Energy Agency and I have said uh, another information I have shared with you that is the solar power currently makes up just 4% of the nation's power supply, yes. But <clears throat> it is said to grow 18 fold and becomes the new king of India's generation fleet by at least 2040. It will take time uh, because uh, in the Western side of the country, there are uh, solar power and this is I mean, there is a very hot in, uh, in the if you go to the eastern power side there is a very a greenery so you cannot find the solar every side but if you go to the western part of the country you know there is a not that much green uh, that uh, as the eastern side is so you can find the steady source of the uh, solar energy it takes if you uh, uh, if it is for household and street light uh, 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 street lighting and all this so you it uh, you can easily uh, uh, use with the uh, small small part but when it comes to the substation it, it takes uh, i mean the huge place that uh, uh, and very uh, that place is not always available and the megawatt, the output of the solar power is lesser than the um, hydel power and the thermal power. So it will take time. Uh, so that why, that's why it's mentioned that the 2040, because as I already mentioned that the thermal and hydel, hydel and nuclear power, it, they generate uh, uh, more heat more heat, so uh, heat is required to generate the energy. So uh, if we want to replace those conventions, take time, it will take more infrastructure and more planning. So uh, definitely it will not be uh, within one day, but yes, we have to take step. Renewable energy replace fossil fuels completely in future. Yeah, that's just I have answered uh, Amrita. It, it will take time. It will not uh, so easy because this uh, non-renewable and uh, non-renewable the resources and the conventional resources they generate uh, more heat. That produce more heat and uh, to produce electricity, the more heat is required. It is not possible with this uh, uh, infrastructure of uh, renewable resources. So it will take time. So completely in future, not, not that depends because one day definitely the, uh, uh, there, there are no uh, resources of coal and the fuel will be left. I don't know what will, be ha what will happen that day, but uh, I think that will take 100 years or more than 100 years. But uh, we have to think uh, uh, a second way also. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, uh, India's first solar thermal power plant uh, in Mount Abu, Rajasthan. There's also an information. 
and uh, it has a design to run 24 and 7 utilize the uh, concentrated solar power technology and the solar thermal power plant is based on shaped 770 such dishes to generate one megawatt electric. So that is also an information I have shared with you. I, I hope you'll find this useful. What is the importance of the geothermal energy also comparing to other renewable energy in India? Let's ask this question. Manjur. Uh, geothermal energy. <clears throat> I'll be coming. I'll be coming to this point. And there I have uh, shared a statistics, solar market in India. So you can easily find this. Can you, uh, can you see this slide? Friends? Hello? Hello? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I know. And maximize. Yes, ma'am. It is visible, ma'am. Visible, no, but I can't maximize this side. Slide. Yes, I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> so this uh, look, this blue color, this blue color is a gas resources. Okay. And uh, this yellow color, this is coal. And this red color is hydro. And this lighter blue color that is nuclear and this is the renewable this is this one wind and solar so you can see the demand see how it jumped it is 2010 and it is 2014 now we are 2000 yeah 21 so almost gone so you can see that's uh, 22 so in 2010 the demand was like here and there is an estimated uh, <clears throat> solar capacity set to overtake gas and coal by 2024. So you can see this, how it jumped. So this is a statistics. So it, it will help you to understand where uh, uh, the difference, where we are standing today. The energy consumption and the capacity and the forecast where we are today and what is the forecast so i think you are it will help you to understand so coming to the next slide wind power another question okay <clears throat> Now it is wind power. Uh, another information I have shared with you that is uh, as of January, 31st January 2001, the total wind power capacity was 38,684 megawatt. Okay. And India is the world's fourth country by cumulative wind energy capacity currently at 38 gigawatt okay. and installations are expected to reach 53 gigawatt by 2024 and wind solar power uh, hybrid power has been introduced in india okay we'll coming later to that <clears throat> first uh, let us discuss the wind power wind power wind is also a natural natural resource and uh, if you go to the gujarat kutch Rajasthan, that side, so that side, uh, <clears throat> the uh, energy, I mean, the wind energy is a uh, huge because <clears throat> there's a no man's land and uh, a sand. So <clears throat> you can, uh, uh, so uh, the wind power is easily utilized that side. And if you uh, go to the South India also, 
there you will, uh, will find the so many windmill and <clears throat> And uh, gradually we are using our other natural resources that is a renewable. If you uh, uh, use the wind power, it will not uh, of, it will not finish one day because it is a renewable. So <clears throat> this renewable uh, this wind power is also used. Nowadays, what's happening? We are using the hybrid. Hybrid means if you go to the uh, western part of the our country, so there is a uh, sun uh, sunray also uh, the uh, huge type huge kind of uh, quantity of sunray you will get and the wind power also you will get a huge in, in huge quantity. So there we are using the combining the. Uh, solar power and wind power at a time. So this picture will help you to understand how this hybrid uh, substation or power station are going on because it's an uh, open area and there are other uh, solar volatile cells also are there for solar power and the wind power is also there to utilize the land and the places. And if we all together, we produce the energy, then the energy distribution cost also will be lesser, right? Because if you, there are uh, transmission, sorry, transmission and distribution power, uh, cost, transmission, transmission cost, because if you generate uh, that solar uh, energy separately, and then you uh, uh, generate the wind power separately. So it will take uh, more land. Now it is land problem is there, but if you uh, uh, <clears throat> utilize it as a combined in hybrid, so the gener energy uh, generation will be higher and you can convert the gen uh, energy from generation to transmission and transmit the energy at a time. So it is a, a cost uh, uh, saving, place saving, land saving, everything. So now, nowadays that, that uh, wind solar hybrid power has been introduced in India. <clears throat> now the tidal power. <laughs> um, this is uh, required a coastal site because uh, you know tide, you can see only the seas and oceans. And uh, this is uh, only you can use the coastal areas, but it is good to utilize every kind of resources, right? So uh, there are uh, some information that the total identified capacity of the tidal power is 12,455 megawatt approximately. And that the plants are in <clears throat> Khambat and Kutch areas in India. Because there you can uh, uh, see the uh, huge areas, no man's land and sa uh, sands were there. So it's uh, better to use that side only. But the uh, advantage is that the environment is very much environment friendly and the high <clears throat> predictable energy sources, because we know when the tide is coming. So it's a calculation, Every uh, the experts, they know so uh, <clears throat> there's a very predictable energy sources and high energy density. There's a huge high energy when the tide comes to the sea and ocean, it is a very high energy. So that's the way we are uh, using, utilizing every type of our general uh, natural resources to limit the uh, non-renewable energy. And now our, our future plan means our countries, our nation's future plan is to <clears throat> how to utilize this is a, uh, in uh, more ways and to set the infrastructure that we can limit the usage of the non-renewable energy to save our world, save the global warming and save uh, the human, not only human, the other livings also uh, to save our world. But it has also disadvantage that is the high tidal power plant construction cost. It's a construction cost is very high. And <clears throat> if tides are too large, then equipment can be severely damaged. You know, uh, this is, uh, we cannot uh, uh, control the tidal energy. 
who cannot predict also sometimes in the, some natural calamities also uh, happens and, uh, and the storms and everything that that's also keep happening and that time if the tides are too huge and the equipment they are so expensive so costly so and if it uh, da, uh, it uh, it is damaged uh, um, uh, in every certain period and we have to reset all these things so it is not a very cost worthy and <clears throat> and yeah definitely it has also some cons that negative influence on marine life forms because you know uh, uh, there are shark and uh, other fishes and they have uh, they actually follow the wavelength but sometimes and when uh, they come to that uh, uh, the equipment yes. hello hello <clears throat> And when they comes to that equipment, uh, they lost their way, and uh, it uh, actually affects their lifestyle. And location limit, obviously, other than the coastal you, uh, coastal areas, you cannot <coughs> generate cannot construct the tidal uh, power gener uh, power generation plant, and the variable intensity of sea waves. That is the tidal. That is unpredictable. So there are the disadvantages, but still we are using uh, this tidal power is in a uh, limited way, uh, definitely, but uh, still we are using. Now we're coming to the next, uh, that question is that geothermal, right? <clears throat> what is the prospect of uh, ocean thermal energy, energy conservation in India as renewable energy and uh, Okay, <clears throat> this is also come to the, the geothermal, uh, geothermal, because it's a in a <clears throat> geothermal. The prospect of ocean thermal energy conservation in the, okay, ocean thermal energy also comes to the geothermal. Because from what uh, does the ocean get heat? only uh, inside the our earth right so this is also part of geothermal geothermal uh, it is not always so easy because there are limited resources as i say that pressure is there and uh, uh, some other resources uh, where uh, you can get the natural hot water so nowadays we are using uh, this geothermal technique but yeah the way we are using this uh, solar and the tidal and this resources, uh, we have uh, we are not using that uh, much because we don't have that much uh, infrastructure yet in India using the geothermal. But uh, yes, definitely, as we are uh, trying to completely task uh, for into the renewable energy, the so one day we come, we will uh, discuss on geothermal also. So these are the generation, what I said, because the main part is generation, but other uh, part is the transmission and the distribution. This is also a part, but the generation is the main thing because the generation depends upon the uh, social, uh, social uh, uh, prospect and the economy and the global one, everything. And based on this generation, you can find also you where the our uh, uh, next uh, what is our next vision and our next mission. So uh, in this uh, generation transmission and distribution, generation is the most important thing. <clears throat> now it's come to the power transmission. Power transmission, you uh, almost you see there are uh, many kinds of uh, tower tower structure you can find. So mostly up to 132 kV level transmission, we use uh, <clears throat> this, uh, we use that uh, tower structure. And uh, when it comes to the distribution, we use the, the PCC poles, rail poles, where there's a crossing, we use rail poles. So these are the part of the transmission. After generation, there is a, first there is a uh, step up transformer, then it's a step down transformer. And then with the transmission line, we transmit the power. 
So voltage level which is in case of AC. There are 765 kVs, 400 kVs, 220 kVs, 130 kVs, and 66 kVs. And the uh, and according to the voltage level, we use the tower structure. That is a design. When you uh, uh, know the learn the design, then uh, you will <clears throat> know the there is a A B C D kind of tower structure, and you will learn this. And this is the, <clears throat> the uh, conductors also. Uh, that's a HTLS conductor nowadays is introduced because it is a high temperature, low sac conduct, uh, conductor. When it's a, we are uh, transmitting uh, on, a, uh, on a long distance, so this kind of HTLS trans, uh, conductor is used because of the low sag. Because if we uh, uh, save the sag, then we can reduce the uh, tower uh, number of tower also. Because it will reduce the cost, not only the cost, because uh, our tower uh, to uh, construct a tower, transmission tower. So we have to consume the land also, and land is a very big problem in our country, especially in our state. So, <clears throat> so this uh, HTLS uh, conductor has been introduced, and other than uh, use it is a triple AC, AC SR conductor. <clears throat> triple AC is all alloy aluminium conductor, and uh, AC SR is Aluminium, I forget the name, sorry. <clears throat> and uh, uh, polymer, there's a polymer uh, insulators are also used in this AC uh, transmission line. And uh, <clears throat> and that's the HVDC. Nowadays, we are uh, using HVDC also. HVDC, we are using just because of in AC current, there are faults, you know, and the voltage drop also. But in HVDC, there is a no voltage drop, no voltage drop. But the disadvantage was that the uh, in HVDC, the conductor size or uh, size. Using that. Now then come to the distribution. And distribution is now it's a distribution. And uh, <clears throat> the main part of the distribution is substation. So <clears throat> there are uh, mainly four kinds of substation. That is the air insulated substation. That is a normal conventional substation you can find in a, a state electricity board and uh, everywhere. That is <clears throat> the substation is the, I mean, the air insulated. And that is uh, another is a gas insulated. Now as the uh, space is very much constant, so gas insulated substation has been introduced. There the <clears throat> SF6 gas, gas is work. Uh, uh, SF6 gas works as a insulator and that has a high insulating capacity rather than the normal layer. And uh, uh, somewhere hybrid substation is also used. It is a uh, part of <clears throat> AIS and GIS also. And uh, the, uh, you can uh, see the picture. This is, can you see? This one, hello, hello. I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you know, you know uh, the first one that is a normal uh, conventional substation is uh, it is the example of uh, <clears throat> AIS, air insulated substations, and this this is at the uh, example of the GIS substation. You can see this. And this is a uh, GIS substation is totally indoor and uh, uh, the uh, space is constant. So this we are using this uh, um, GIS and uh, the insulation is SF6 gas gas and it's a, um, uh, it's, um, I mean the uh, compact sign uh, substation you can say inside a cubicle 
and there is a uh, is uh, um, circuit breaker and isolator and the all the equipment are inside and bus bars all the equipment are inside and the insulation is sf6 gas and the hybrid in a substation uh, it is a hybrid substation uh, it is a part of ais combination of ais and the outdoor and the some equipment you can see there is a they are using the sf6 gas so this is the hybrid substation and the compact substation compact substation normally we can see it is a uh, uh, distribution uh, distribution part definitely but the uh, low voltage part that is the 11 kb or less than 11 kb the compact substation is there the, you can see the one part is the uh, transformer is there and, and then the, you can see the uh, see a bus bar chamber and another part is the RMU chamber where it is an isolator and a circuit breaker is there. It is a very space saving. It's a kind of a, a, a normal cubicle, like the DC set cubicle, but you can see there is a three chamber. One is the, uh, for a transformer, one is the ingoing, uh, incoming and outgoing bus bar, and another is the, uh, it's called RMU, RMU, that's a, a <coughs> combination of circuit breaker and isolator. So these are the normal conventional, uh, I mean, uh, substations, in substations. And yes, nowadays, the, as the technology has been, in, uh, I mean, improved, so uh, RT, uh, artificial intelligence is uh, using to uh, monitor the substation fault and everything. And the relay we are using in substations, there is a, a, a Many uh, new technologies has been introduced that we read in our textbook, uh, the separate kind of relays and all this, but nowadays not, no separate kind of relays are used. There is a only a digital uh, relay with the multifunction, that the art for relay, and ev I mean, every relay function is a combined. Okay. So uh, technology has been introduced, uh, uh, improve so as you are a future engineer i will request you to please uh, update yourself and upgrade yourself uh, with the new technology otherwise uh, uh, it will help you to work in future in the field so <clears throat> that's it uh, so if you have any queries anything you can reach me on linkedin and uh, uh, facebook or uh, instagram everywhere you can reach to me now, if you have any uh, question or anything, you can ask me or we'll go uh, 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 summary. We will conclude the um, uh, discussion. So uh, participants, if you have any questions, uh, you can may ask now. Students, if you have any questions, you may ask now. Okay, well and good. So I think okay. uh, so. You are uh, you, but you have understood the all this uh, thing. What we have discussed today is really good, and I also expect you are uh, much more advanced than the, our uh, our time. So uh, let us come to the conclusion. <clears throat> now again, we are celebrating that day, the, the 14th December. National Energy Conservation Day that we are celebrating all together here as the charity begins at home to uh, understand your responsibility. Take your small step towards saving the energy and start with your home and switch off your all the life lives when you are not inside the house and uh, <clears throat> they, uh, they, uh, use uh, consume much uh, less energy as much as possible use our solar energies that i said uh, in the during winter we will heat the water uh, while taking bath and uh, if it is possible use the solar energy and uh, when it is a daytime so if it is not actually required so uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, switch off the lights and uh, uh, and so many things that you can uh, take your step as a, not only as an engineer, definitely as an engineer, uh, you have more responsibilities than others. 
as I, I believe that because engineering is not only a course, it is a complete package. Uh, package so it uh, helps us to uh, grow in a different way take uh, state towards uh, everything and uh, and uh, spread awareness because you are much more aware than others so spread awareness take small small tape, uh, steps you can take because uh, it is your world also and uh, global warming and the climate changes really matters and uh, I, i'll request you to take steps and uh, <clears throat> you know all these things because you are already uh, studying this the structure of the power uh, generation that is a uh, uh, generation transmission and distribution and the based on this there are the, um, the <clears throat> based on the resources we decide uh, the, uh, decide uh, the type of generation it's a non renewable and renewable energy as we are trying to use less uh, non renewable energy and trying to convert our system towards the renewable energy but it will take time still we are doing uh, we are planning i mean our country is planning so uh, let us see what we can contribute to our country to our society and to the mankind and uh, <clears throat> rest you all know because you all have read the power system you know the power generation power distribution and uh, <clears throat> power transmission everything that you all know the system uh, very suggest you to go through the, all the newspapers and update and update yourself with the statistics what the our economy going towards and what uh, uh, <clears throat> what's the good for our society and this this is not uh, will help you to be a good citizen or engineer in future it will help you to understand the what the job market is and what is your required skills you need to upskill yourself so this is uh, um, uh, all of the required information and rest okay uh, take care take uh, uh, stay safe be uh, uh, all the best for your future and yeah and again i will request you celebrate that day but not on uh, not limit the day uh, on a single day take you are uh, understand your responsibility and take your step so what to you thank you ma'am thank you ma'am for this wonderful session and obviously the session was very much interesting and informative one also and obviously we will uh, take care about this power conservation so now um, uh, there is an there is an announcement uh, for participants please uh, fill up the feedback form which is uh, shown at the chat box so everyone fill up this uh, feedback form so now on behalf of uh, greater kolkata college of engineering and management we are uh, facilitating you ma'am with our digital memento as a token of honor uh, sir please show the digital memento this is for you ma'am oh so thank you so much thank you for you ma'am thank you so much thank you for the honor and it was a uh, really I mean, a very great time I have spent with you, and it took me back to my classroom once again. And uh, all the best to all the future engineers. Best of luck. Thank you so, thank you so much, ma'am. Now, I, on behalf of uh, Greater Kolkata College of Engineering and Management, and the entire team of Institutions Innovation Council, extend a very hearty vote of thanks to our speaker. Ms. Reshmi Gopi, ma'am, for gracing your important ideas and concepts and sharing with us your findings and opinions today. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank and, you. Thank uh, you. My sincere gratitude to our principal, ma'am, for her encouragement to arrange this webinar. I also wish to express my sincere gratitude to the convener of IIC, Ms. Amrita Dhar, and uh, head of the Department of Electrical Engineering, Dr. Arubrata Mandal. and all the members of institutions innovation council of gkcm and uh, my sincere thanks to all the participants for being with us so thank you ma'am good night thank you madam eta thank you everyone thank, thank you so much